you only cast so much of a line for certain fish, you know? If I know it's going to scare you, little white lady in Iowa, I'm not going to tell you that I did 13 years behind the wall, you know? And I, my last stint, I was in the shoe for a battery on a peace officer. I'm not going to tell you that, you know? Because you're not going to give me your little $50 so I can help the kids. So I tell you what you need to know. They think, they see me and they think critically acclaimed author or nonprofit director or a business entrepreneur. They don't know all the stuff behind that, all the, the gray area. How do you feel about what you've done? Do you feel like, wow, I think I I've come full circle? No. People ask me that all the time, bro. Has it hit you yet? You know, because you know 12 newspapers, every radio station. I spoke at the Caravan for Peace where I was the only uh, English-speaking person there, you know, all that stuff. But then you think about it, there's still so much more to do, bro, you know? Like, what if I would have stopped at the book and then say black boys would have never happened? You know, we're going to save hundreds of thousands of little boys, bro. So I can't. Eventually, it'll hit me. Eventually, I'll go, you know, like, I really, you know, like, like I told my son the other day, my oldest, I said, they can't kill me. I'll live forever, you know, as long as there's newspapers or in archives and these interviews are being recorded and the radio shows are being done, I'll live forever. They, like, like, they can't kill me, you know, and that's, or when I pick up this book, the, the paper version of the book is when it really comes, like, dude, you're really doing something, or when I see myself... On, on Channel 5 News being interviewed, you know, for something. I'm like, oh, wow, dude, that's me. Like, but then I got a meeting tomorrow. You know, I got an interview with streetgangs.com, so I can't really celebrate that because I got, I got to prep for this tomorrow. How did they, your, your family, react to you, and what was that like really not being around for them during, like, these very important years? The oldest, it ruined him. You know, just being totally, completely honest, it ruined him, you know, because I left when he was six months. I came home when he was six. I left three years after that and was gone eight years. So I, I, that ruined him. The mistakes he's making now are directly because of me, you know? And I don't blame society. I don't blame anybody but myself. But then I, I stopped allowing him to guilt trip me with that. You know, you got two cars out of me already. You know, <laughs> like, I, no, you can't use that. Stop using crutches because when you think about it, my parents did the same thing to me, you know? And I use that as a crutch. So I know, I know what you're doing, you know? And that's why it's, it's paramount that... I teach these things at the Save Black Boys program, bro. Now, do you, is your your son getting in trouble with the law and things of like that? No, he gang he gang bang mm -hmm. he gang bang, but he's not a he's a gang member, not a gang banger. There's a difference, you know. He grew up in one place, so eventually, if you're not strong enough to deny to call the streets, you're gonna bite. He bit, but he bit, but then he's always been responsible enough, thanks to his mother, to go to school and have a job. So he's had the same job for about five years. Now, when you were locked up, did you find out that he bit and he was in the street? No, I just found this out recently, you know? And when he told me who he was, I called the people I knew over there to verify that he's really... And they were like, yeah, he, he's... Yeah. So I was like, oh. And how, how'd that make you feel? Bad. As a dad, you know? As a, as a dad, bad. But then I know where he is 90% of the time, so he's not that much. That's why I said gang member instead of gang banger. There's a huge difference, you know? He's not a he's not an active in the streets going to do stupid shit. You know, he's not that person, you know? But he gets into the little stuff, you know, the arguments and the occasional fist fight at the movies, you know? He does that stuff, so he's not innocent, but he's just not uh, full-blown full blown lost either. I'm from that generation of grandma's babies, you know? The, the, the 77 to 80-ish range where, you know, they just dumped their kids on a grandma because crack was right around the corner. So we, um, we grew up with our grandmothers, and I don't really talk about my parents because I don't have really that many memories of them. You know, my grandmother raised me. You know, I'm a grandma's baby straight out. And remember, you said, you mentioned uh, there was nothing else to do, and people kind of give in, but that's the call of the streets I was talking about earlier. That's exactly what that is, you know. You, you, uh, and, and a lot of time, what's funny, stuff is just usually we go in under the buddy system, you know. We, you know, the homie did it, so I did it. You know, my friend, my friend from high school, junior high did it, so I did it. You know, I didn't really want to go do it. Or like us, it was simple. I grew up over here. I don't got to get, well, like us, we don't do the, you know, how you get put on, you get jumped in. Like, we don't do that. Either you grew up over here or you didn't. Only foreigner I've seen us except is Chris Brown. How that happened, I have no idea. I was a no on the vote, you know. But outside of that, you know, we, we were like a tight-knit unit, you know? Everybody knew everybody, just families, moms, uncles, aunts, you know? I've always been or wanted to be a great dad, but I was in love with the street, 
you know? And so like my mom and my dad chose drugs over me, I chose the streets over, over the first two. You know, I have a daughter now who, she's with me, I'm surprised she's not here now, you know? But the, the, the first two, I had to grow up, you know? And luckily my other son is 12, I came back when he was not that, he was not that old, so we kind of like pushed pause, you know? We picked up where we left off, because I was there with him until he was two, and then I left and then I came home, and now he's just like, okay, well dude, I'm glad you're back. I'm like, dude, me too, you know? Now, when you, your first son, he was, what, almost 18 when you came home the second time, right? Almost an adult? Uh, he was almost grown. He was 16. He was 16. So, so what's that like? You're having a relationship. This guy's in his 20s now, and you're just really getting to know him now probably more than ever before. Yeah, it's, um, it's hard, bro, because I tell people all the time, I have a grown son that I don't know. Like, I don't know, like, what he likes and doesn't like. And we try. We try hard. We come here. We have heart to hearts. But there's a wall, you know. Now, there's bricks removed from the wall little by little so I can we can see each other. But for the most part, bro, there's a wall there because he grew up without me. And he has that resentment, you know. And I can't tell him, get over it, you know. But all I can say is, I'm here now, you know. We can't. That's, that time's gone, you know. Reluctantly, I hate to remit, admit it's gone. But I'm here now. Let's move forward, you know. So the wall must be much thinner or not as big with your second son. Oh, there, there's no wall. It's, there's no wall. It's like I push pause, bro. He's like, dude, like, don't ever do that. Don't leave again. You know, and I'm like, all right, cool. You know, shake on it. We're here, you know what I'm saying? And he lives in Dallas, but I get him every summer. I get him winters. You know, I got a box of stuff for him now. Like, I'm, I'm actively, actively, actively in his life, you know, versus the other son where I thought I was doing enough when I really wasn't. Soleil is three, and she is the reason I changed. I mean, I can say my other son, my middle son, yeah, but Soleil is, like, that's daddy's baby, mama's maybe, you know? Like, that's me. And she, she's the one that I always, when I think about, because the devil pokes at you, you know, try to get me to go back and do stuff. Little, little incidents happen where people say little stuff, and the old me wants to get out, you know, and, like, play. But then I think about my daughter, or I think about my baby. I'm not, I'm not missing no walk-in, no preschool. No, I'm there. No, I'm there. I got, I've met the, the, the preschool so much, they told me stop coming up here. You know? I got to go in the little in observation room behind the glass. Cause I go in the classroom and get my daughter, you know? But she, like, spazzes out when I leave, so I had to stop going up there. Last question I want to ask. You've been free. You've been out of prison for three and a half, four years now? Four years. Um, it's pretty fair to say that it don't look like you're going back no time soon. Hell no. What did you have to do to make that adjustment to make sure I'm never going back to prison? Hug my daughter. Hold her for the first time. That was it. You know? People change. But men, niggas, Crips, Bloods, Southerners, Northerners need more reason. You know? And Soleil Gully was my reason. You know, so if you ain't gonna change for that, you might as well just jump off a bridge, bro. Now she's a little too young to understand your whole life. Uh, when do you think you're gonna share with her your history? You know what's funny? I already started. She has an email. You know, I put everything in her email. When she gets 18, I'll give her the I'll give her the password. So you actually are, have a uh, an active diary going on with her. That I'm keeping for her. You know, so when. At, if I'm dead and gone, they know when she turns 18, give her the password, you know? And she'll get to relive everything from the bad to knowing she's the reason. You know, like this right here is going here in her email. You know, so she, she'll hear me say, you know, you know, oh, he said he changed it because of me. Imagine thinking, okay, well, the most they can give me is three years because it's only possession of a uh, stolen credit card or forgery. It's three years. And then you get your paperwork, and your paperwork says you're a three striker. I took it personal that a lot of these books were basing their stories on things that I had done or things that friends of mine had done and getting credit for it. So I said, well, you know what? I'm going to do something about it.